Okay, this is section 3333, deals with the first derivative test for relative extrema. And my first question to you, what does a derivative give us in one word? Slope. Slope, very good answer. Okay, slope of the tangent line to a function at a given point, right? All right, what does a positive slope tell us about a function? It's increasing. Yes, a positive slope means a function's increasing, right? And vice versa, a negative slope means a function decreasing. is decreasing, right? All right, so here's the thing. So let's start with greater than this. Let's start positive. We'll be positive people. Okay. If f prime is positive, greater than zero, this implies that f is increasing. Now, is the converse of this also true? If the function is increasing, does that mean the derivative is positive? Yeah. No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. Which makes this what kind of a statement when it's true in both Co inverse. Co conditional. A bi bi conditional statement, right? Okay, bi conditional. So that means that a positive derivative implies that the function is increasing, and an increasing function implies that the derivative is positive. Okay, works in both directions. All right, and if we were to do the opposite, if the derivative is negative, this implies that the function is decreasing. A negative slope means a decreasing function. All right, okay. Now, how do we know when we have a um, we're talking relative today. All of our maximums are going to be relative. How do I know when I have a relative max or a relative min? Like here I'm at the top of a hill. That's a relative max. How could I, what changes there to determine that it's a max? Yeah. The slope is zero. Okay, the slope is zero, but I could have a function that goes like this with a zero slope that doesn't have a max. Both points on either side are below it. That is true. Is there a way that I could, some other way I could use to determine this being a max without having to literally measure the y values on either side? Chandler, say it louder. That was so beautiful. Yes, that was just gorgeous. Okay, guys, I don't know if you all heard Chandler, but the slope changes from positive to negative at a relative max, right? Or, in other words, the derivative changes from positive to negative. Then, at a min, the slope or derivative changes from negative to, negative to positive. When a function changes from increasing to decreasing, it has a max. When it changes from decreasing to increasing, it has a min. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Actually, this, all this information is going to lead us into what is called the first derivative test for relative extrema. be a good thing to start with? Derivative. Find the derivative, right? So our first step is going to be find f prime and find the critical numbers. Now, of course, critical numbers are the values of x in the domain of the function where f prime is either what or what? Zero or undefined. undefined. Zero or undefined. Very good. So your first step is to find a prime and find the critical numbers. Your next step is your very, very, very favorite thing in the whole world. Make a sine line. Sine line for f prime. We don't care about the signs of f. We care about the signs of the derivative. Okay. 
All right. This third step, this is relatively new. It's about, I'm guessing right now, maybe it was maybe eight years ago that the College Board changed their requirements for justification for first derivative test. So they no longer accept just finding the derivative of the critical numbers and making the sign line and writing your answers. They now require that you write your answers with written out statements of justification. So I lovingly call these because statements. Okay? There are for today, there are going to be four of them we're going to learn. Tomorrow we'll learn another three, and next week we'll learn another two. So you'll have nine wonderful because statements that you will have to know going into your test. Okay? You should memorize them verbatim. Don't change them or make up your own. Use them exactly word for word the way I give them to you, okay? Okay. All right, so step three is to write the answers with... because statements. I'm going to show you what they are and I'm going to show you what I will allow for abbreviations. <coughs> Maybe you should eat your lunch during class like I do. The first one. You have a sandwich for you. Appreciate it, babe. F of X is ink Check what it is. increasing. I'm like one. On the interval A, B, so I use A, B when it's an interval, I use X, Y when it's an ordered pair or a point. We don't increase at a point, we increase on an interval. So on the interval A, B, always use an open interval. Always, 100% don't ever use a closed. All right, always use an open. You'll always get it right then. F of X is increasing on A, B because fresh out of Alaska. F prime is positive. All right. F of x is decreasing on some interval a, b because f prime is negative. Right? There's the two for increase and decreasing. Now we need relative extrema. A rel max occurs at, this is an ordered pair, x, y. It's an x value and a y value. At x, y, because f prime changes from positive to negative. You have to use F prime changes from positive to negative. You can't say because F changes from increasing to decreasing. They want your answer justified with calculus, so they need you to mention the derivative in your because statements, not the function. Okay? All right. And then the last one. Oh, relative minimum. Good guess. A relative min occurs at x, y because f prime changes from negative to positive. Yeah, 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 when we do actual problems. No, just to distinguish that it's. I don't know. That's how it's out of the Yeah, they're cheese This is the first derivative test. That's it. Yep. So, therefore, homework tonight is going to be like. 
For your homework tonight, the first part you just have to find increasing and decreasing. Some problems you just find where it's increasing or decreasing. Some problems you just find relative extrema and some problems you have to find everything. So you just make sure you read the directions. All right, first example, we're going to be finding everything. Yay! No, man, it almost seems like all the force is getting dumber and dumber because you can infer all this from a sign line. Right, you get this all from a sign line, right? which is why they used to just take sign lines as justifications. But the problem was they were finding that students were doing it and making the sign lines, but not interpreting them properly. So this forces you to show that you know how to interpret the sign line correctly. Yes. OK, so here we go. First example, determine the intervals where f of x equals 1 third x cubed plus 5 halves x squared minus 6x minus 3 is increasing or decreasing. Then locate all relative extrema. I'll give you a moment to copy. And then what I want you to do in your groups is follow the first derivative test, which means I want you to find the first derivative. I want you to find the critical numbers. I want you to make your sign line. And then I want you to stop. All right, but you can do this together. I want to include x cubed and stuff. Keep eating all my food. Perfect. I'm going to stop the video.